<laughs> so cool. Every shot has a real element to it. This is the actual set right there. What? Yeah. What? This that, is the real deal. That's real? That's that's real? Yeah. How, what was the budget on this movie? Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's episode. Stay tuned to the end to learn how you can get your first three months free. Welcome back to another wonderful episode of VFX Artists React. What are we talking about today, Nico? Today we're gonna to talk about some really cool stuff, such as how do you make CG look real? Also, why does that CG look so bad? All right, let's jump in. You cannot run, human. Oh, is this the Supergirl clip? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. You've never seen Supergirl, dude? <laughs> Come on. Dude, if that's oh, how you man. intro, if that's how oh, you man. intro, not so, not bad, I'm not no bad. Human. Whoa! <laughs> Ooh. Wait, is why, that why, is that why is that digital? Like, is why, that? A, but is why? Head. Why are you trying to do CG heads? That's the hardest the thing. Shadow? Oh, Supergirl was the construction worker the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> this is your bad chance. filmmaking! <laughs> oh! Limited budget, guys. Limited budget. Don't be so sure. This, this, this definitely looks like amateur After Effects effects. Well, they're biting off more than they can chew, first off. A yeah. full CG head with the that talks with the rough. lips, it, you're biting off a lot there. By the way, I think they used the same shot twice here. Go, to, go back a little bit further before the woman just randomly transforms. So, that reaction. That reaction. Yeah, yeah, they're hiding it by doing a push zoom on one of them. There it is. They're doing both. That's just like classic bad physics that you sometimes get when trying to do it real like that. It's like she punches him hard enough for him to fly 20 feet over to a wall. Slowly. And yet it takes him like an hour to get there. Also that shot of them on the glass, like that just looks rough. Just looks like blue Swiss cheese. How would we have done that differently? Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Make yeah, it yeah. so the blue glows. Yeah. Like there's no blue on the actors. Like there's no like blue light really being cast in them. Particles are the oh, thing goodness. that I would want to add here. You could even drop in like a literally a fire embers element and just color it blue and just have like a little. Asian right. play. Right. Muzzle flash. I'm all for acknowledging, you know, short time, crappy decisions from the producer and stuff like that. I can't excuse bad muzzle flashes. It's Flash. got like the M4 <laughs> muzzle flash on the front where the gas expands out the side of the muzzle brake. And it's like really tiny. It looks, it looks ridiculous. Dude, that. <laughs> She's clearly just jumping onto like a crash pad in front of a green screen. And they're just taking her and <laughs> keep framing her out to the left. You, you can know. see her hair go straight up. Yeah, as she accelerates sideways. Yeah. I would have just not had her accelerate. I would have just let her continue diving, cut, and the next shot she's spinning around, and now You're so I'm right. blasting. Don't Why accelerate. Even, yeah. yeah, don't accelerate. I mean, and honestly, the director of the show shouldn't have shot this like this at all to begin with. Every single VFX shot is locked off. They're going with like the easiest way they can approach these shots, but it's really just making them look really bad because you have nothing covering up your weaknesses. It's like this shot of her close up like that. That's a sweet shot right better. there. Yeah. This might have been the case where it's like, I've heard that VFX shots need to be locked off when you shoot them. If it's not locked off, it's gonna be way more expensive and take a lot more time, is probably what they're thinking. I think you're totally right. Yeah. I know people who work on shows like this and it's usually just like literally the tiniest team. It was probably legitimately one person who probably worked on this whole thing in probably two or three days. Take it to see Mr. Murdoch. Let's stretch her legs. Okay, next piece, we're gonna look at the tit and Nick going down in the ocean. Why they turning? Iceberg straight ahead. Iceberg straight ahead. Iceberg straight ahead, landing. So this entire scene is CG, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> the only CG in Titanic is the water and the occasional extra people on set in okay. the sky, like the, the stars. Dude, that's awesome. Those practical effects are great. There's already crazy things happening all over the place. Like for example, that shot of the iceberg passing by the boat. You'll notice there, none of the ice that lands on the boat comes from the iceberg. It's all poured off the side there. It is looks it really? legit. It yeah. looks super legit. Everything is real there except for the iceberg in the sky. Because that iceberg is actually a miniature that's been filmed separately. It looks flawless. The practical ice it's bends the ladder. Ice. It really brings everything together. Yeah. So how do you do this shot? Take note, you exist in an era where the only CG, the only fully rendered images you can do is of maybe some extras walking around. All right, so they're real, and the, 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 the edge of the ship that they're touching is real. The ship extending into the background? I imagine it was probably a, an actual, like, filmed miniature. It is miniature. And, and they're filming the... this scene with a motion-controlled camera, yes. and they're doing the shot again with the motion scaled down for the miniature. And this stuff is all over the place. 
They would actually film the shot in real life with the person on set with a motion controlled rig and then scale down that motion and film that same motion again on the miniature and just stick the two on top of each other. So the actual visual effects part, the actual compositing, is really easy. Yeah. It's a green screen key, set your footage on top of the other one, and all the other work is done for you. The crazy thing for Titanic is they built a set that was basically the full size set of the ship. There's only one side of it. The other side is all just scaffolding. This is the actual set right there, which they built to be able to slightly angle into the water. What? Yeah. What? This that, is the real deal. That's real? That's, that's real? Yeah. How, what was the budget on this movie? $200 million, which is the biggest budget back in the day. Gah. So there's an interesting problem that they had to solve with Titanic. With all your miniatures going into the water, you get to start reading the scale of the water. We all kind of know how big waves are and how right. big water droplets okay. are. Okay, yeah. They actually needed really, really, really big miniatures to actually sink into the water and have it look correct. So they had a miniature as big as 1 6th. Wow. Uh, and I think they go down to like 1 30th, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a shot where he's on a green screen. We are looking at a miniature. Because we can see the front of the ship? Because we can see the front of the ship and also all the water work. And the reason it looks so real is because it is real. It's just a miniature. That boy right there, that's a full size set that they're sinking into the tank. This is inspiring watching this, man. This kind of movie wouldn't get made anymore. The fact that they're doing so much of this stuff practically. Another crazy model shot right here. Dude. This is all model, the Dude. whole thing. They actually had to do this twice. <laughs> they did it once, they rebuilt it over two weeks and then did it again. Wow. All those people, fake. Dude. All those people in the water, fake. This is one of the first movies they had with motion capture extras. And they went out and they would do mocap sessions. All the base stuff we take for granted that's like for free to grab online today, didn't exist back then, and they had to go and they had to capture all of it, and they'd stick all of those little 3D people all over the deck of the ship. The visual effects in Titanic are really not that complicated. Mm -hmm. The magic in Titanic is them going out and getting the hundreds of people in the water in full costume, and getting the full model of the ship and sinking it in the water tank. Like, that's the hard stuff. And that's the stuff these days that they don't do anymore because all that hard stuff is now done with CG. There's but that's, a, uh, that's, yeah. that's tough, man, because this definitely has a sense of realism yeah. that you don't get with CG. This one's for James Cameron. Oh, snap. Oh, this video looks familiar. I know oh. this footage all too well. Are you sure that's not real? Well, we are. Joe Rogan's not. Joe Rogan thought that was real. Did we fool Joe mean, Rogan? But dude, to have Neil Blomkamp, Joe Rogan, and Heidi Kojima all see this video, I can die peacefully now. It's a more ambitious version of the previous Boss Dynamics video we put out back in June. Hi. We wanted everything to be as real as possible. You know, like the whole thing about this, it doesn't work if it doesn't look and feel 100% real. So go check it out in the Corridor channel if you haven't already. We have lots of cool shorts like this one, usually visual effects based. Hence why we're here doing Visual Effects Artist React. There's also a side-by-side -side comparison of both before and after of this video. So you see Clint in his suit and his chrome ball helmet, Getting and then the final robot. Beat up. So go check it out. We'll have a link somewhere. I tried to help you walk away. Now you're making me do this. Wow, dude, this is nuts. So I was really surprised to find out that this scene the whole scene is all CG. 100% CG. 100%. Sucker. So now all your friends have to die. Whoa, I thought he was in a motion oh. tracking suit. He is. Okay, <laughs> Wait, that's whoa, the thing. whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. What? Quentin Beck is Mysterio. In the comics, he is a VFX artist. What? Yeah. <laughs> As a, an homage to that, he actually is wearing a real. ILM like motion capturing <laughs> suit. Like yeah. as his on screen costume is an actual real mocap suit. So Spider-Man Far From Home is one of our most requested reactions. And uh, if you guys have any other movies, TV shows, etc., you'd like to see us react to, please leave a comment below. It, it's great inspiration for us. So yeah. if you are the VFX artist who worked on this shot, this sequence would be your VFX reel, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, this was probably the coolest moment of the entire movie. It was a company called Framestore. So in order to break down the sequence, there's actually not a lot to break down. It's just, it's all CG. And yeah, there's different, some, you know, some different techniques going mm -hmm. in. But this is where I would like to actually take a moment and delve into what makes this CG look real. How do you take a sphere sitting on a plane and how do you bring it up to this level where it looks like a sphere that could be sitting in this world? 
Well, the first thing you got to do is set up your lighting. I would grab an HDRI, high dynamic range image. And an HDRI is a 360 degree photo of a real environment, so you're getting real light samples. The HDR provides both the color of the lighting and the direction of that lighting and the intensity of that lighting from every possible direction. So the next thing we want to do to this sphere is we'd want to give the surface some color. The first thing after you actually identify the colors, you actually have to give it physical texture. How do the grooves reflect light in different directions? So for that, we'll use what's called like a bump map or a normal map. And that'll actually tell the render engine the sort of terrain that sort of object will have. So like a wooden uh, sphere will have like little grooves between each of the wooden slats. And that's like the micro detail that would be way too hard to go in and do by hand. So from there, I determine what is reflective and what absorbs light completely. Just like all these other maps that we're listing off, this would be a black and white map. Whatever's black is 100% reflective, whatever's white is not reflective at all. And there's a lot of gray in between there. Technically, every surface around you is reflective, even the ones that seem rough. The only difference between that and a mirror, for example, is that a mirror is taking light rays and bouncing them off at sharp angles, whereas a rough surface takes light ray and scatters them in a bunch of different directions. And so having your color channel, good HDRI lighting or realistic lighting, a reflection map detailing how glossy something is, and normal maps slash bump maps or even displacement maps to give a surface its micro textures, and then rendering all of that in a physically based rendering system using ray tracing and good simulation of light rays. Just from a pure rendering perspective, that's how you make something look real, and that's like the foundation of what's going on in these scenes for Spider-Man. The systems that let you do all that in just one go and have everything work are only a few years old, and that's why you're kind of seeing these movies just starting to hit these photoreal edges that they're getting to I think 2019 marks the year where CG has crossed the line into photorealism and we cannot tell the difference. Okay. Yeah. Sam's doing cool blood sim over there. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> We're looking the wrong way because Sam's working on something right now. We're doing Star Wars Rated R, specifically the Order 66. Execute Order 66. So expect that video very soon. Subscribe. Subscribe. To not miss it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I go to sleep every night wondering the same, the age-old question, who the heck framed Roger Rabbit? Who Framed Roger Rabbit was groundbreaking in that it was the first movie not to incorporate cartoons into live action. It was the first movie to do it with camera motion. The camera is all over the place, panning around, doing crazy moves, and interacting with people all over the place. Notice the serving trays are real, by the way. In fact, lots of the cartoons are holding real things. Real pianos. Real chair. And the first time ever, Donald and Daffy on screen at the same time. In order to blend these worlds, it's, it was this insistence on characters interacting with real objects. Uh, scotch on the rocks. How do they film those like real serving platters, but with cartoons there? I know the answer to that question. D well, tell me the answer, Nico. You guys want to know the answer? It. Is it like a skinny stick off frame that they're moving it around with? Clint's pretty close. This whole set is built raised off the floor. And underneath it oh. are people with sticks with the serving trays on them walking along. And the sticks are just through little grooves. And they're puppeteering it from beneath the set. Oh, OK. And they're not painting out the sticks. They're just covering up the just sticks with the up. cartoons. I'll drive. But I want to drive. No, I'll drive. I'm the can. Out of my way, pencil neck. So here, cartoon car, right? How oh, are boy. they doing this? Oh, he's sitting on something. That, that steering wheel wasn't even attached to anything. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely on some sort of little buggy. He is actually in what's basically a little like ATV yeah. that they like rigged up. And there's actually a stunt driver sitting in the back of it doing all the driving. Okay. He's just holding on for dear life, <laughs> trying <laughs> not to getting, get thrown he's off He's getting of it. thrown, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, there's little touches everywhere, from the newspapers being like kicked up yeah. to like the dust from the brakes of the car. Yeah. Like they just they go the extra mile to try to always incorporate these cartoon objects into real life by having them interact with something real. Okay, wise guy, where's the rabbit? I'm seen it. All right, so here's a great example of all the things coming together: the chair move, the cartoon just moved the chair, the real gun, by the way, the Wait, cartoon what? is holding. That's How are they holding gun. that gun? <laughs> Is it another gun on a stick? Is it a gun on a stick? It's actually a puppeteer above with a gun on wires, just puppeteering it along and mimicking all the bouncing. That's, that's a gun on a stick right there, yeah, by the way, so they can push so it into cool. his face. That little shadow on his hip, I think, is the armature for the gun. Boop! See as it rises up, gun stuff happens, and then 
The water spraying out of Roger Rabbit's mouth. So that's a little tube coming up that he's pretending to push down that has a little hose on it. Watch the handcuffs on Bob Hoskins' wrist. So they're stiff. <laughs> they're stiff. And it's actually Bob Hoskins doing the puppeteering himself with his wrist. Oh. Every shot has a real element to it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. The compositing here, this isn't a computer compositing where you're just taking the layers and adding them in your computer. You're literally taking the background film and the hand-drawn film. Wow. And taking both those and shining light through that onto another piece of film yeah. to get the final exposure. Oh, dang. So cool. Leave a comment down below suggesting what we should look at next and maybe uh, rip a new one. Is that a button? What I was trying to say is that you guys should leave a comment for any TV shows or movies that you want us to react to, both good and bad. It's great inspiration for us. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, by the way, because we have a lot more cool stuff coming out. Subscribe. <laughs> wow. Anyways. You blew that at me. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sam Gorski co-founder of Corridor Digital. I'm here today to tell you about a word from one of our sponsors, ExpressVPN. They help make these videos possible. What is ExpressVPN, you might ask? Well, this is a VPN. It's for privacy. It basically encrypts and helps keep your data safe by projecting it out into a big network of cool proxy servers, make it hard for hackers and FBI agents to monitor your internet traffic. We've all been there. There's something you want to know about, but you don't want to Google it because you're worried that it'll be in your search history. Well, ExpressVPN helps safeguard that privacy you wish to maintain. Whether you're a Chrome guy, a Firefox gal, or a Safari, whatever, the ExpressVPN has an extension for every single one of those. ExpressVPN also has leak-proofed its VPN server security. No leaks here. Hey, less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And if you want a cool little discount or cool code, enter this one, C-O-R-R-I-D-O-R-C-R-E-W, and you can go to E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com. Look at that. Look at all that. That is expressvpn.com slash corridor crew. It's less than $7 a month with a 30-day back guarantee of money. <laughs> <laughs>